Check out this picture of these three panels. Let's say you are competing against nine other contestants to win $40,000 for first place, $20,000 for second place, or ten dollars for third place. Along with other supplies, you are given one two-inch grounding bushing. A grounding bushing is used to properly bond service conduits to a cabinet, a box, or enclosure. Adjustable lay-in lugs accept and position conductors during installation. And they have plastic liners to prevent damage to cable and or wire jackets during installation and use. And where you install this bushing could mean the difference of whether you're in the money or not. Believe it or not, this scenario played out in real life recently at the Ideal National Championships Apprentice Competition. Now, if you're a viewer of Sparky Channel, I want you to win these kind of contests. And so what we're going to do right now is we're going to go to the National Electrical Code for some guidance. This is 250.92B. B is method of bonding at the service. Bonding jumpers meeting the requirements of this article shall be used around impaired connections such as reducing washers or oversized concentric or eccentric knockouts. Standard lock nuts or bushings shall not be the only means for the bonding required by this section, but shall be permitted to be installed to make a mechanical connection of the raceways. Electrical continuity at service equipment, service raceways, and service conductor enclosures shall be ensured by one or more of the following methods. One, bonding equipment to the grounding service conductor by an applicable method in 250.8a. Two, connections made up wrench tight using threaded couplings, threaded entries, or listed threaded hubs on enclosures. Three, threadless couplings and connectors if made up tight for the metal raceways and metal clad cables. And four, other listed devices such as bonding type lock nuts, bushings, or bushings with bonding jumpers. Here is an example of eccentric knockouts. You see here's a smaller circle here and a larger circle out here. And then this would be our two inch knockout right here. And that's what our contestant did. He uh, knocked out a two inch knockout. And this is a plastic bushing to help the cables to not get damaged when they're pulled through the nipples. Here we have two 12 inch metal nipples connecting the three panels. All four of the connections have eccentric knockouts which are larger than the two inch knockout which was used. Let's examine each connection to find out which connection should have the grounding bushing. Let's first take a glance back at the code. Electrical continuity at service equipment, service raceways, and service conductor enclosures shall be ensured by one or more of the following methods. Here in Article 100, we have definitions, and here's the word service, and it means the conductors and equipment connecting the serving utility to the wiring system of the premises served. And then we have service conductors, which are the conductors from the service point to the service disconnecting mains. Here's a drawing from the 2023 handbook that shows the service point, it shows underground service conductor, it shows service entrance conductors, and it shows a meter and service equipment. And our example has a meter socket very similar to that with no disconnecting means in the meter. Here we are at NEC 2023 250.24b, load side grounding connections. A grounded conductor shall not be connected to normally non-current carrying metal parts of equipment to equipment grounding conductor or conductors or be reconnected to ground on the load side of the service disconnecting means except as otherwise permitted in this article. So we're clearly looking to put our grounding pushing on service conduit. The service entrance conduit coming into the meter socket is made of rigid PVC, so we can't put a grounding bushing on that. 
How about this connection right here? This is clearly service conduit, and there are eccentric rings in this connection. However, there is no ground going to this particular meter socket, so we can eliminate this connection from needing a grounding bushing. How about this connection, which does have eccentric knockouts? Well, this is not service equipment. This is on the load side of the service disconnecting means, which is this big switch right here. So this connection does not need a grounding bushing. So that leaves these two connections, which do have eccentric knockouts. Here's how one contestant handled it. He put the grounding bushing on the left hand side. And this is the middle panel, which is the safety switch. Notice the ground wire comes in from the load center. There is no ground wire coming from the meter socket. The meter socket is bonded because the neutral lug in the meter socket is bonded to the enclosure. This nipple is on the load side of the service disconnecting switch. So it is the feeder or branch circuit side and does not require bonding. This nipple, which comes from the meter socket, is on the service side and is required to be bonded. This is the nipple that needs the bonding bushing because it is on the service side of the main disconnect and we have eccentric knockouts there, so it is required to bond this nipple. This is how one contestant placed his grounding bushing in the panel with the service disconnect. He did a nice job of installing the grounding bushing and running the ground wire through the grounding bushing lug, but he has his grounding bushing protecting the load side nipple instead of the service side nipple. Here is what another contestant did with his grounding bushing. He successfully put it on the service side with the eccentric knockouts, which is correct. However, for whatever reason, he didn't get the ground wire run into the grounding bushing lug and then to the ground bar of the panel. Here you can see how you strip off about an inch of insulation off of the ground wire and put it into the grounding bushing lug. I would also like to mention that there are some special rules for bonding over 250 volts to ground. Our system in the example was 240 volts. In conclusion, if I had one two inch grounding bushing to work with, I would put it right here. Of course, you can put more grounding bushings if you like. It's okay to exceed the code. So what do you guys think? Where would you put your one grounding bushing? I hope this video was helpful. Thanks and happy wiring.